Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays for another Factorio space exploration update. And here you see my glorious new um, Naquium processing facility uh, that's currently broken. So <laughs> yes, one of the big things I was trying to do in the last uh, stream was get this system up and running and get everything uh, and, and get a decent supply of Naquium coming through because before the, the supply I had before just wasn't quite capable of keeping up with it. So, between streams, I, I designed this up uh, to, to, to run nicely if you get the sort of two, two, two belts worth of, um, of Vitamelange coming in and a belt of a crushed Naquitite coming in. That should be able to spit out a decent amount of, uh, of, of Naquium ingots. And so, there's a, there's a few problems with this, unfortunately. Top of the list is that it required over 800 tier 6 uh, productivity modules. And so, if we start, if we look up here, then. Yeah, sure. I've got some of these machines have the um, have all the tier six modules in. They're supposed to have, but I also but I ran out. So also quite a lot of them are either topped up with tier threes like um, like this one, or just only contain tier threes because I ran out of tier sixes. So I thought I'll put what I can in there and try and get it working. And so it's it is it it was mostly working, and it was it was eventually slightly better than the system I had before, but only slightly. <clears throat> but I need to build another four or five hundred tier six uh, productivity modules and a few more tier eight productivity modules to finish off these um these uh furnaces up here for cooking for cooking the actual modules so at the moment the system is not anything like as good as it should be it's missing quite a lot of the modules it needs and that means when it is running it's only slightly faster than the system i had before there's another big problem with it though you'll notice it's not running at all um can I have daytime, please? There we go. And that is because we keep running out of sulfuric acid. So there's none here. The problem is that we've run out of sulfuric acid because down here we've run out of sulfur because we've run out of oil. And we've run out of oil because the only place I'm getting oil from on Tulip is this little mine down here. And it's not capable of producing it fast enough to keep everything satisfied. So we've got, I don't know, not very much. How much have we actually got? Is it, am I, I haven't linked to any of the... Um, the things here so I don't actually know how much I've got but it looks like there's about 5,000 in each in each container so I've got about 50,000 oil here and that's not a full trains worth so this is this is very slow so there's a couple of things I want to do to fix this one is to come down here and probably put speed modules in all of these and quite possibly put a speed moduled up beacon in the middle like this and just get it coming out really really fast um, and that, that'll make an enormous difference we'll get a decent amount of oil coming out there then and also set up another oil mine here and perhaps another oil mine up here as well just so I can get get the oil out of the ground a bit quicker and have a decent supply of everything running there's another one there but it's, it's a lot smaller so I'm not sure that one's worth doing but yeah this should with, with, with that this is this isn't an insurmountable problem it's just a bit annoying that I got this whole glorious system set up and then immediately ran out of oil because presumably I was trying to use it a bit faster but if we have a look at the production graph I can search for Naquium um, over the last hour it's, it's that one I'm looking at and you can see that over the last 10 hours in, in the distant dim and distant past I had this steady state where it was producing it at about about 125 per minute or maybe 150 per minute at the be at best um, I then came in, I built up the new system and it dropped to 128 and I went, oh my god, what's gone wrong here? It turned out one of the beacons was missing and that was that was the reason why. Um, and then since then, it's got to the point where it can run at 230, but it's doing all of this because basically I'm not bringing in the crushed Naquium fast enough. So in order to, to attempt to fix that, I've built some extra... Oh, it gets darker quickly on this planet. I've built a few more, a couple more of these ships. So this is now the... Um, what's this one called? This is the um, oh, this is the there and neck again. This is the first one I built. So there's now, but there's now four ships doing this route, bringing the crushed Naquium from Norvis orbit down to Tulip to be processed into the um, into the more advanced version, in, 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 into the Naquium ingots. So we look in space. We'll probably find that yeah, there's at least two of them um, stacked up above Tulip because the problem's there. Um, so as I as I get all of this finished, and there's the there's the next one. Um, there's the third one rather. So we'll get them all stacked, all, all, all on Tulip, and we'll be able to then get a decent a decent flow through. We'll see how that goes. Hopefully everything will just start working. And also, in order to, to help with that, I've now got, I think, three of these long-range ships, the Naquifiers, that fly all the way out to Realm of Shadows, uh, fill up here, and then fly back again. Now, the, the, um, the other thing I need to do is build up, is improve the amount of... Um, 
Naquium crushing or Naquitite crushing I'm doing on Realm of Shadows. So I want to come in and double the amount number of these things I've got here. So that's something I've currently I've got all the bits for it, and I was currently I was going to say I was currently on the way out to it at the end of the last stream. I have now apparently made it, so we can anchor in and get those things up and up and running. So that's going quite well. Quite well. <laughs> There's just a few problems here, there, and everywhere that need, that need sorting out. So, what else have I been doing? Well, I went out to um, Kalidus orbit, and um, I've, I've improved the um, the system here that's supposed to be bringing out the, um, the 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 ammunition for the meteor defense guns, and I've made what I find co quite comically tiny, tiny spaceships for this. Um, they look like this. <laughs> They've got one antimatter engine on the back and an antimatter tank there, an antimatter booster tank to allow it to take off from space, space stations. So that will then buzz out to um, out to Kalidus orbit. We can then unload it using the there's a ch yeah the chest here. So the long inserter on the outside of the other station will be able to then unload all of these from it. Um, and then it'll, it'll yeah it'll happily fly out there and um, and load it up. Although I do need to do a little bit of reprogramming on this one I think because um, I decided after I'd built the first one of these, I decided that I actually want them to be able to fly to um, to other places as well. So I've got a second one of these ships, which we can probably see. It's supposed to be on its way out to uh, Khalid's asteroid belt one here. So in eventually. It'll come out, and there, oh, it's docked already. There it is. So it's, un it's docked here, and it's unloading. Um, so yeah, this is this is now providing a a meteor defense guns here. Because another problem I had was this, which I was oh, I was supposed to be fixing this on the way out, and I flew straight past it and completely forgot about it. I'll have to do that on the way back. Um, yeah, this needs repairing because an asteroid, made, a meteor, made its way through, and so I'm, I've decided to put in some guns for it and some solar to this to keep this thing as a basically a self-contained system. So. That needs fixing. I can't believe I forgot that. That's quite annoying. Um, I'll have to go and sort, sort, sort all of this out as well. Back in Norvis Orbit, I've also added a couple more things to the bus down here. Um, I finally got it making beacons. So in order to get this working, I needed to bring up the Tier 1 beacons from down on Norvis, because they require all kinds of silly things like concrete to make. Um, so I've got them being brought up by um, on the spaceship, and then we can load them in here along with these... Um, energy catalogs and turn them into the wide area beacons which are, which are the ones I'm using everywhere because you can fit about four times as many uh, modules in them and as the name implies they have a much wider coverage area so these are much much better. I've also started building mechanical facilities as well. These were quite annoying because um, well, if we look here we've got so many different things on the um, being brought in by, by uh, robots. We've got concrete coming in by, by robots. We've got gun turrets in theory being brought in except have run out and assembly machines being brought in but again run out of those so those i think more certainly more of the assembly machines are going to be brought up by the uh, by the big space by the, uh, the the little spaceship that flies up from from norvis but the uh, the guns i wouldn't i'll need to check out but now we've got almost 30 of these so the so that's 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 good we've got a decent number of them so next time i need to fly out to expand realm of shadows i'll have them all ready rather than having to build some new infrastructure for it all <laughs> I've also been out to Trellos, sorted out the problems over here. So this this was a rather silly one where um, a bite of meteor had landed here, destroyed some pipes, and so everything had ground to halt because there's no water getting through, typically. So I've fixed that up now. And now the way this works is that we've got the um, the core chunks coming out here at a hell of a rate because this is a massive planet. They're all then being crushed down into um, into core frag into normal core fragments and stone, but with a byproduct of oil because this is an oily planet. So the oil is getting then passed off into these tanks where all of this stuff turns it into rocket fuel, which then gets passed down into these tanks, and then when a uh, when a, a, a core fragment ship arrives here, it will be refueled by these tanks <clears throat> as much as possible, and then it can it can happen, and uh, it'll use that fuel to then take off from Norvis and to save. It's a bit of a saving, so we don't need to put quite as much fuel into the system as we did before. So yeah, this is um, this is generally quite a nice nice system. It. It kind of it kind of just works now, uh, except when biters come down and destroy destroy parts of the pipe work. Uh, but basically, yeah, the, the the oil gets used up by turning it into rocket fuel, and then we've got huge quantities of core fragments available to be taken away, um, as as ever. Um, now, if we look in space, we'll probably see that. Uh, yes, here's one of the ships on its way in to come and pick up all of that stuff. So great, that's working quite nicely. I had to rescue one of my ships that had got stuck. That was a fairly easy process. I just flew out and pumped some more fuel into it and then uh, flew off again because I was able to limp it to land it just to pause in Greenleaf orbit. So that wasn't that wasn't too bad. It was annoying, but not, not too bad. 
And I think the final thing that I particularly want to talk about is I've now put in uh, an alarm system on the ship. So this there was a problem. When I, this is the ship I've been sending out to do all of my um, our Arcosphere gen uh, collection. And so I've set up a, a, a fairly nice system where the ship will fly out to, to somewhere. Um, I can then use the stuff in here and the RoboPort to deploy a little um, a little blueprint here that will fire, launch the uh, Arcosphere collection um, things. That that that'll that, that works quite nicely. It picks up all it picks up all the Arcospheres I need, um, and then I can demolish it all afterwards. However, I keep sending it out to places and then not knowing when it got there because there was no feedback. So now I've got this uh, speaker here that's programmed to watch the output from the. Um, from the from the navigation console and tell me when the distance goes below zero so the ship will have a distance that ticks down this is the distance to its destination it will tick down as it gets closer and closer then when it arrives it goes to minus one and when it's anchored and docked it goes to minus two so when this so when the signal is less than zero it puts a d signal for donut because that's this ship into the um into my interface down here so i can see so i'm i can see that it's there and it's ready and it needs me to go out and tweak it and put it into the and put it into the um and, and do something with it, basically. Part two of that is to put in a second automated signal that will sound when the that will tell me when the um, all of the Arcosphere um, things have been used up from the blueprint that's put down out here. I haven't set that up yet, but I've got the um, I've got the speakers in inside the uh, on the ship, so it'll be fairly easy to do next time. I'll just tweak that and and make a new blueprint from it. So that's been a rather short episode. Um, I feel like I haven't really had all that much to say. Uh, I did collect a load more um, Arcospheres, which have all gone into the system over here. So we've now got even more of them. Um, Arcospheres are down here in the area that you can't see until I go into navigation mode. There we go. Um, so, yeah, this is all... It was ticking over reasonably sensibly. Um, ooh, that's interesting. I need to tell this to stop working when this... Right, so... This is this is all backed up. This is a problem. We've made too many Naquium Tesseracts. So what I've what I've got with the um, with the Naquium processors is I've got a thing saying if either of these have got Naquium processors in, then pass up pass up to here, pass up to here. Um, then this is to stop. Um, this is only to run only and therefore only to call in the Arcospheres when there's no Naquium processors available. I need to do exactly the same up here somewhere. Um, probably on, on this one, in fact, with the Naquium Tesseracts, because otherwise you get this problem here, where this is all backed up, and now everything is broken, and yeah, I'm going to have to go in and clean this out. So that's quite annoying, but I'll have to, yeah, but that's at least, I know how to fix that, it's not too much of a problem. Um, on the plus side, it means there's now a backlog of the Naquium Cubes coming up here, so that means all of the Naquium Cubes can go off to, to have other things done with them. Um, because Naquium, Naquium is still being a massive problem for me in this, in this playthrough. Um, I've probably find yeah as, as you can see there's actually none available at the moment but then we've seen all of the processing problems with it at the moment so that's not too surprising but I've been finding that we're not producing enough of it at the moment which is why I've been out trying to boost the production there it's mostly been the Naquium cubes that have been a problem I might need to put in another couple of these material fabricators out here to, to do to, to make more of those which is a little bit of a problem because they are the things at least when they're running they use crazy amounts of power when they're running they use 258 megawatts each and you can't module them to, to cut that down a bit which is a bit awkward so yeah I'm just gonna put in more of them and then a lot more solar up here this is getting ridiculous already but a lot more solar in order to generate all of the power that these things are using so yeah we <laughs> things are basically churning over okay um, but there's a massive problem here that I've just spotted and we still don't have enough Naquium we do now seem to have basically enough Arcospheres if we're looking well we would have enough Arcospheres if they weren't all caught up on this belt so, but in gen in theory, we've got just about enough of them. Um, so yeah, a bit of cleanup is going to be required here, or maybe just having another train coming out and picking these up. I could extend this a little bit actually, like that, um, and like that, and then at least this will flow through. We get all those arcospheres back gradually. They can all dribble back into here. I can um, tell this to stop for now <laughs> um, yeah and I'll go and I'll put in a slightly better system to stop this stop this breaking in the future but as you can see once all these have flowed back into the um, into the warehouse up here we've now got 
up to 15 of each of the arcospheres. Now, there's a, because because I've just been doing a load of this processing, there's a lot of a lot of uh, inverting and folding needed to be done to get all of this back into balance. And I shall produce a video on how all of this works at some point. My hope my hope was to have that one come out day before yesterday on Friday. Um, that obviously hasn't happened. It's going to uh, hopefully it'll come out next Friday. I'll I'll try and get that done just just as soon as I can. Um, <laughs> sorry, is all I can really say. Um, but yeah, eventually the inverter will run until we get about. 12 or so of all of these which will be quite a nice which is quite a nice number to have I think it's, it's enough that I feel this is working reasonably well and then we can get on and try and get the Deep Space Science 4 running a bit more cle uh, cleanly this was just, just left running the whole time I was off trying to make more Naquium so it's been buzzing away relatively slowly but it does mean we've now got a whole 888 of these um, science catalogues made we need to have 2100 before a train will deign to come over and pick them all up but this means we're more than a third full so it's it's going. <laughs> I just need to get a better supply of absolutely everything in order to get this running. In fact, actually, looking at this, it's this computer that's the uh, limiting factor at the moment because we've got lots of all of these data cards. It's just this one's running slowly. So, yeah, some more of these would probably help quite a bit. So, that's the thing to do in the next episode. So, come along to the next stream. It'll be on Wednesday. I shall be trying to fix all of these problems that I've been pointing at in, in this, this episode. Um, oh, yeah, so I've been talking about the, uh, the lack of um, modules. That's another thing I should talk about. So yeah, as I said, I, I discovered I needed eight, like 800 modules of the tier 6 productivity modules. And we've got 50 made up here because we're short of, 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 of. I bet it's red circuits. Yes, we're very, very short of red circuits. If we trace that back, it turns out if I look down on Norvis, the reason I'm so short of red circuits is because I never upgraded the red circuit production facility from this system, which is, I mean, look, it's using yellow belts. It's using tier two assembly machines. It's using yellow inserters. Oh my goodness. This is so antiquated and just generally out of date. But up until now, there's been enough of them that it's been okay. We also seem to have a shortage of copper, which is most definitely not helping. Um, I'm not quite sure why. Oh, well, I, there's a sudden sh there's a shortage of copper because I'm making so many circuits, and circuits are very, very heavy on the copper. And this solid blue belt that's coming out of the uh, crushing facilities here, it just isn't enough. It's going into in, in all, all into here, into all of this, and we're making we've got twenty thousand in here now, so a train can finally come out and pick some of that up, but. It's not being produced fast enough to keep up with absolutely everything that's going on. Um, so over here, presumably, there is also... Yeah, there's a massive shortage of copper in all of these systems. We've got 14,000, which is not enough. It does seem to be trickling through at the moment, but trickling is probably the right word for it. So I think I might need to, at some point, come down and redo all of this with blue belts throughout and with lots and lots of beaconing. Now, I suspect... I, I don't know for sure, but I have a feeling that I might not be allowed to use productivity modules for these. these might, no, no, circuits I should be able to, I, I think. Let's have a look at, um, where is it, Henkis Eswe. Yes, this is where I'm making the blue circuits now. And yes, okay, we, ca we can, we can productivity module these up, so I really should be doing that. I should go around, another thing to do is going to be to rebuild all of the circuit factories for greens and reds, and blues are okay actually up here, but greens and reds definitely need to be filled up with productivity modules and then beaconed and made just generally better and faster because it's not cutting it. This, this, the funny thing is though, this was, this was enough for absolutely ages, and it's only been now when I've suddenly started making massive, massive quantities of beacons that it started to struggle. But, I guess that's how it goes. You, you build something up, you, you build a massive, what you think is at the time is a massive system for building red circuits, for example, and it, it and that means it's great, it's, it's quite future-proofed, but eventually your factory catches up and you go, okay, I need a, I need a few more of those. I wonder how the green circuit production is holding up. Um, this one is fine. This one is built on exactly the same sort of design, exactly the same sort of system. Um, it's making the green circuits without any problems, and this one is actually okay. We've got the full 345,000 in these chests across here. So that one seems to be fine. It's just the red circuits that are a problem. So I'll, um, yeah, go in and boost that. I should probably boost the green circuit production as well, uh, supply as well at the same time, to be honest. Maybe, maybe with use, cunning use of beacons, I can fit that in here as well, and we'll make but we'll make both red and green circuits in here. We shall see. That's something to play with in the future. So, that gives me plenty to be getting on with in the next couple of streams. So, thank you for coming along to this one. I'll, um, 
I, I say come come back on Wednesday to watch me actually fixing all these problems. Come back on Monday to watch me automating all of the um, a load of the magic stuff in uh, Minecraft Dungeon Dragon Space Shuttles. And then uh, there's, there's of course these weekly week, weekly videos to give you an update. And the um, the Thursday videos with um, uh, uh, GTA videos. Those are getting some, some quite good ones are coming out now. I've, I've upped the um, the sort of the, what I do in the edits quite a bit now. So yeah, come along. There's one of the, the the one that came out this week. I'm really pleased with. So please go go along and watch that video. It's definitely worth it. And um, even if they don't do quite as well as Factorio videos, I'd like to get a lot more people watching them. So so please do. Thank you for watching. I shall see you in the next one. And, and all the other videos are on the channel. I'll see you there.